Via yeah. telephone. West Virginia Secretary of State, candidate for governor, Mac Warner. Mac, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Great to be with you. You like that song, Mac? I do. In fact, that was part of the reason that I joined the military, and uh, that has special meaning to me. If you ever have a chance, you need to go to Fort Bragg and uh, watch the induction of the Green Berets when they get their, when they get those Green Berets. It is the most moving ceremony I think I've ever seen. Uh, they, they play that song. They, they hand them the Green Berets. They put it all on at the same time, and you're looking at the point of the spear in America's defenses, and it's just fabulous. So I appreciate you playing that. And our other guest that you're having on here today is uh, one of those very special men. So. And and uh, by, I guess, coincidence, it is Barry Sadler's birthday today, 1940, who had the hit with that. And uh, I think, Mac, you attained the rank of colonel, correct? Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, yes, I did. Lieutenant Colonel, I'm, I'm sitting here with retired Admiral Bill Stubblefield, Maria Lawrenson, and uh, also with you, uh, General Michael Flynn. Good morning, General. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Is this Rob? It is. <laughs> yeah, so good morning, Rob and uh, and Bill. And uh, I didn't catch the other name there, but I'm really honored to be on your show here this morning. Yeah, my Mar- friend Matt Warner. Maria Lawrenson is the other uh, Maria. co-host. Yes. Yes. So welcome to all of you, and uh, General Flynn, you have made uh, a public pronouncement, an endorsement of a particular candidate for governor in the state. Yeah, so Mac Warner, I think uh, I, I am you know, wholeheartedly getting behind Mac to be the next governor of the great state of West Virginia. Uh, Matt, Mac and I have gotten to know each other and, and have crossed paths over, over our years in the service, but we've gotten to know each other over the last couple of years, and, and as I've watch what Mac has done as your uh, current, you know, sort of state chief business officer, secretary of state of West Virginia, uh, you know, lifelong West Virginian. I mean, him and his family, his wife, Debbie, uh, his, his beautiful, beautiful uh, sons and daughters that, uh, that they have raised there. I mean, this, is, this guy just has all the, all the qualities that we need. And also Mac is a, as I am, you know, he's a huge America first, uh, uh, candidate for governor and also a real strong uh, sense of, of what America uh, can still be. And I think that's, that's uh, everybody, all your, all your listeners and those listeners I know that are in other states that, are, that monitor your show and people that are, that are listening around the country and watching what's happening around the world, uh, we're, in a, we're in a really tough spot right now. America is in a very tough spot because of the lack of leadership in the executive branches of our uh, of our government, you know, certainly the the federal government in the White House, and then I, I would say across every state in the uh, in the country. And uh, this is why I'm getting behind Mac. Mac has those leadership qualities that that also he also possesses that that you know that humility, but that toughness uh, in, in that we need right now. And also also his military experience. Uh, has a lot to do with why why I'm getting behind Mac because I think that right now we need those types of leadership skills that are uh, that are taught in our military because it's it's about discipline it's about organization and it's about vision and uh, and and moving moving in this case the state of West Virginia in the right direction and Mac has done so many good things in his time as Secretary of State I mean amazing things in his time as Secretary of State where you know one of the one of the big things that caught my eye was his uh, I mean, absolute steadfast belief in the uh, integrity of our elections and to make sure that West Virginia really is, is leading the way, and it's principally because of the efforts of Mac. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can't say enough great things about him. Uh, I think that for me it's about faith, family, our freedom, and principally that this life, it's about leaders who are willing to stand up, stick their necks out, and uh, and take on the the, uh, the roles and responsibilities that our constitution uh, has still afforded us. So, Mac, that guy. Bill, uh, good morning, General. I I very much am, I am curious about uh, the reasons you're endorsing uh, uh, Mr. Secretary. But before I go there, a uh, question about you personally. I I know at one time you were stationed in Granada, and you had a uh, you jumped off a forty foot cliff uh, to rescue a couple of folks uh, that were struggling in the ocean at the time, and yet you were admonished by not following certain procedures. I'm reading the book at the current time on George Marshall and David Eisenhower, and one of the premises of both of their leadership 
leadership was not to over supervise, not to over manage. Uh, and yet what you did runs counter to what I get out of this book. What changed the intervening years? Where do we come up with too much of a uh, uh, cutting down on personal initiative? Yeah, I, you know, Bill, you'll, you'll understand this. I mean, I, and thank, thank you for, uh, for mentioning that. I actually wrote about that uh, specific event in a book I wrote a long time ago called The Field of Fight that Resonates Today, uh, How to Win the War Against Radical Islam and Its Allies. Uh, but I wrote about that specific event because, because it has to do with initiative. You know, in today's military, guys like, you know, George Patton would never make it. You know, he'd have never made it past major. Um, so where, where has initiative gone? I, I think we have created a system in our, in our armed forces, and, boy, do, are we seeing that now with, uh, with some of the, the, the infusion of things like critical race theory, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness in the ranks. Uh, our, our most senior leaders, who I know all of them. I mean, I know, you know, I know damn near all of them very well, and I, I feel for our rank and file because – when you have to ask for permission, you know, for certain things on the battlefield, especially on the battlefield, uh, when you're when you're in uh, harm's way or you're in you're in a place where where waiting for an answer or waiting for a decision is going to cost the lives of of yourself or the men and women that are around you, you know, there's no time for uh, you know for waiting on on an indecisiveness that has that has bled into the ranks of the most senior people that we have in our military and. And I watched that, and I certainly witnessed that when I was in the military, still under the uh, under the you know previous administration to Trump, the Obama administration. And then I think we are seeing that right now, uh, and you know we just can't deny that, Bill. N- none of us. Eh? And I know you guys have a lot of uh, veterans that are listening to this show uh, because principally, you know, I think what West Virginia represents, but also others in other states that are surrounding West Virginia that listen to this. Everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to. I'm not beating around the bush about it. We got problems in our upper ranks, you know, with, with their with their inability to throw their stars down uh, when they need to, in order to say, "Hey, enough is enough." We we are in desperate need of strong leaders who are willing to take the initiative, uh, because if you can't take the initiative in Washington, you'll never you'll never give it on the battlefield. And boy, I, I saw that. I witnessed that. And uh, I was lucky to work less, blessed, actually. I was blessed to actually work for a great, great young lieutenant colonel uh, when I was in, uh, when I was deployed to Grenada many, many decades ago, uh, who, who was a guy, was a Vietnam vet, and he was a brave, brave Vietnam vet, and he, he you know, uh, Purple Heart and, uh, and uh, Bronze Star with Valor recipient uh, during, during uh, Vietnam. And he knew exactly what what I did, and he, and you know, for a guy, and he's deceased now, but, uh, but boy, I, I'm blessed because I had people like him in my life who were willing to take the risk and say, this guy did the right thing, this, off, this young officer did the right thing, this is exactly what we, what we want, and, it, and I learned a lot from it, you know, you don't walk away from something like that and, and, and learn, you know, you learn the good and the bad, and you take the good and you leave the bad. General, a, uh, hey, Bill. Yes, I'm sorry, Bill. Mr. Secretary, yes, uh-huh. I, I think that that's a great uh, tie-in to why General Flynn was picked as President Trump's national security advisor. I think that they see the world alike, that they see problems, and yep. they go fix it right then and there. Uh, sometimes you don't have time to, to wait for permission. You see a problem, and you get after it. Uh, and that's why I, I think General Flynn and I have uh, connected so well, because we see the world yep. alike. Let me ask a uh, question, 600-pound gorilla in the room to both of you. Uh, and I know, uh, Mac, you and I have talked about this in the past on air. Uh, there were some some difficulties uh, in the uh, 2020 election, which I think everybody's acknowledged. But the question is, uh, in the light of the last year and a half or so, uh, do you – do you think those difficulties rose to the level of challenging the validity of the election in total? Bill, what happened is when the CIA lied to us, when and Tony Blinken, our current Secretary of State, put that idea into uh, Mike Morrell's head, and Mike Morrell ran with it. He was the acting director of the CIA, and they got these so-called 51 intelligence experts to lie to the American people that the Hunter Biden laptop wasn't real. That did change the outcome of the election. That's how this election was stolen. And nobody is 
you notice how nobody on the left wants to address that at all. But when you have our own intelligence agencies lying to the American people to affect the outcome of an election, and that is under sworn testimony in front of the House Judiciary Committee. This isn't our opinion. This is what Mike Morell admitted to. Yes, it changed the outcome of the election, and that's why we're also yeah. still wanting to make sure that this election – those sorts of things don't happen. Okay, uh, excuse me, uh, Mac. Just follow on very quickly. So you're saying that the uh, the election was was impacted more so by the Hunter Biden uh, laptop as opposed to the initial challenge of the voting machines themselves. There were there these things happen in a number of states, but that to me is the biggest one. That uh, just we cannot have our own agencies that are supposed to be protecting us lying to us, and I think that they almost laugh at the fact they got away with it. Independent uh, polls have shown that between 4 and 17 percent of the Democrats who voted for Biden would not have voted for Biden had they known that the Hunter Biden laptop was real. So we simply can't have these last-minute surprises where our own agencies are lying to us. Maria. So I'm going to change gears. Um, <laughs> so why now? Um, why today? general and and mac um is this the is this the timing for this type of endorsement to come out the well, campaign I, is, I, yeah. go, go, go ahead, ahead max sure. go ahead. Go ahead. well I, I this is the campaign's just getting underway you have one candidate who's trying to say it's a fate to complete this election's over it, it's not we're just getting underway and so for general flynn to come out right now this is the team trump this is the people who support trump want to see Trump, Trump as president, know how much better he is than our current administration. And so this is the rollout now from, from the campaign's perspective. I'll let General Flynn address his uh, perspective. So go ahead, General, please. Yeah, I mean, Maria, I think, I think now uh, people are starting to wonder what is going on in our country, you know, and, and asking a lot of questions. I mean, I go all over the country, Maria, and I speak to a lot of people. I'm getting ready to travel to three states here in the next couple of days. And uh, eventually I will, I will make my way up to West Virginia. Um, but I, I will tell you that the big question that I get is, you know, are we going to be okay? Is our country going to be okay? And I, and I will, you know, I'll come back on your show if you want to talk about election integrity issues. It's not just uh, the, the, the lies from, from very senior uh, officials, which is, which is a known fact now, but it's also our entire system. And, you know, and for many, many years, for decades, People on both sides screaming about uh, the, 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 the lack of legitimacy in the voting outcomes for many elections. And there's plenty of plenty of evidence. So, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll come back on it another time because that's a that, that's a show in and of itself to talk about where we are. And these things do take time. But, but trust me, you know, the one thing that I do know, and I'm a I'm a product of not only prayer, but I'm a product of the truth. And the truth does come out. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But when it does. It, it, it gen, generally is ugly for those who were who were uh, providing all these falsehoods. So I think the timing issue is really important because as we roll into a really uh, critical year here coming up into 2024, um, you know, and for those that, that don't pay that much of attention, but if you watch the last video, I think it's the most recent video that Donald Trump put out, and, and, and I'll probably see him today, this, uh, late this afternoon, but if you see the, uh, the latest video that he put out, it is a stark warning to America, to all Americans, and frankly to the world, that says, look, if we, if we don't have, uh, if we're not able to have essentially a fair election, you know, in our government for the president, particularly for the president of the United States, never mind governors and, and other elected officials, we don't have a republic. And, and, uh, and when we say the next election you know, we always say the next presidential election is the most important in the history of the country. We always say that for everyone. Well, guess what, folks, audience? This next election will go down in history as, as either we live or we die and, uh, as a nation, as a republic. That's how, that's how dramatic this election is because we have a global alliance that's forming against this country, has formed against this country. We have people in our, in our government that are, that are clearly uh, part and parcel to that, that, uh, that alliance. And, uh, and many people are working against our, our interests, and particularly the interests of our country as it uh, relates to what's happening overseas, never mind just in the Middle East, which is looking like we're about to enter, no kidding, World War III. I already say we're in World War III, but, but it's going to grow bigger. We just had another country declare war against 
essentially uh, Israel and the United States of America, you know, call it for what it is, but it's Yemen, and they are so they are backed by Iran. So, so we're moving into a place right now, and I think that people need to see the leaders. I think your audience, you know, people that are out there that are wondering what the hell is going on. The audience of America needs to see leaders starting to step up and go, hey, look, yeah, this is this is a, a, a an uncertain time. It is a it is a moment in history for the United States of America where we where we need we must recover. Uh, but if we don't, um, it, it, it you know it's going to it's going to change the way our our republic actually exists. And and I can I'll talk to anybody on this net or you know anybody in your audience about the history of of what we're facing and where we've come from. And uh, let me just tell you that uh, I'll I'll, fin- I'll just finish with I'm sorry, uh, Rava. I'll just finish with look. And Maria and Bill, the timing now is, is vital because people want to see, you know, the voices and see and hear the voices of those people that are willing to stand up and take take charge and move our country in a, into a better place. Yeah, Bill, before you, you go, I, is, go ahead, Mac. All you have to do is look at October 7th, what happened there in Israel. You don't think that there was a direct connection between that and the weakness that we showed when we pulled out of Afghanistan? And exactly. I can draw you, that's just like General was saying, we can go back to uh, what caused Osama bin Laden to plan the attack on the World Trade Center, and it goes back to our weakness in Somalia at it, it, uh, it Beirut, the bombings, when uh, Reagan pulled out. When America shows weakness, the world rises up against us. You don't think that Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran are looking at us every day and the weakness that Biden is showing? That's what General Flynn's talking about. And, and Mac, I want to I want to bring this back to the state level because you're not running for president of the United States. You're running for for governor of West Virginia. And I know we kind of took the conversation more in that in that direction. But in regards to being the governor of West Virginia, uh, t- tell me what this endorsement by General Flynn means to you, and what do you think it might do for uh, your status among the voters in West Virginia. Well, this is, shows that the veteran community is behind me, that the Team Trump, this is – General Flynn represents, you know, America first. This is – there's nobody that is closer to the president, President Trump, and stands for America more than General Flynn. So for them to come in from the national level – see, West Virginia gained this national attention because of what I did with the election and election integrity. That's what brought me to their attention. They want that sort of integrity and security for all of America in the election. So that's what that means. And it means it's not the other side that's being represented by this out-of-state money, this $10 million coming in for clumper growth, the anti-Trumpers, the never-Trumpers that are representing or behind one of the other candidates. This is the rollout of the Mac Warner campaign for governor that shows that we've got the credibility, we've got the backing, and that uh, I'm going to be the next governor of West Virginia. That's what this means. I appreciate General right. Flynn. Uh, yeah, and let me let me board. and let me just jump. Let me bring it back to home and to West Virginia. You know, it's about energy. It's about agriculture. It's about small business. Mac mentioned veterans and the and the way we take good care of veterans there. And I think West Virginia uh, and I think Mac, you know, really understands that. But energy, agriculture, small business. I mean, those are all things. And 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 in Max, you know, I think seven years. You know, he's really really worked on the on really the, the, these business organizations to the tune of. Of you know over well over a hundred thousand uh, small business organizations that that have benefited from from the work that he's done. But you know when we talk when we talk about you know bring it back home to West Virginia, it's the things that West Virginians have been known for and worked their rear ends off over the over many many years. You know, and we can say this about other other states, but it but in particularly West Virginia, especially when it comes to energy and two, two things: energy and agriculture. And and there's other aspects of West Virginia that are that are highlights. I mean, it's, it's, I've been out there. It's a beautiful, beautiful state. You know, there's all kinds of ways to attract other, other, uh, other uh, venues and other types of things to happen out there in West Virginia. But those are two, and, and believe me, this country, I've, told, I've said it many, many times that our country, especially through coal, clean coal, clean coal, we have enough clean coal in this country to, to take care of the rest of the world for like three, four, five hundred years. I'm not kidding you. I mean, that's, that's what I studied when I was uh, not only in, in uh, my days in the, in the military, particularly at the highest levels of the military, to, to look at how we're dealing with, with, with energy resources, food resources around the world. But where in this country can we do these things? How do we become energy independent? And West Virginia is right at the center of that. 
General, I uh, I hate to interrupt you, but I we're, before we run out of time, a question I really need to ask. Uh, I know you and uh, President Trump have both been active in America First, finding candidates uh, to run. Uh, Mr. Secretary, does this imply at all that you may be getting President Trump's endorsement as well? And by the way, I've got about 45 seconds, okay. Mac and General. Well, like General Flynn said, he'll be talking with uh, President Trump later. We'll see whether that develops. Uh, President Trump has got a lot of stuff on his plate, so uh, we'll see how that develops. Okay. General, final comment. Yeah, God bless you guys. Thank you, Rob, Bill, Maria. Thanks for having me to your audience. Uh, you know, I, I love uh, love what, uh, what you guys represent. Thank you so much. God bless.